G'day everyone and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's time for my top 40 Phantom Draft. I've been doing these once a month, I think. This is the October edition. I would have done it earlier, but obviously we had the trade period where picks were moving left, right and center. But now we've got a degree of certainty. Pick swaps can still happen till November 10th. And then of course there's live trading to consider, but I'm gonna do a top 40 based on the current 40 picks that are currently there. Obviously allowing a little bit for academy bids and stuff. So, you know, if you look at the order on page paper right now it's going to look a little different to this actual mock draft because I've tried to accommodate for teams obviously matching bids and their pick moving up the order and then subsequently they'll lose picks later so I've done my best but hopefully it makes some sense so like I said uh, we're going to be rolling through as though there's going to be no more trades although I do suspect that there will be trades of course in this scenario West Coast do hold pick one then we're going to go all the way through to pick 40 which uh, ends up being the Brisbane Lions after the academy picks and stuff like that before I crack into my top 40, if you do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel if you are enjoying the content, we do plenty of uh, draft and trade content when it's the off season. I've started this little series where I, I am analyzing player by player in the upcoming draft as well. So yesterday I did Colby McKercher, early in the week I did Clay Hall. So if you're interested in that kind of content, make sure you subscribe. Also, I noticed something wild. Over the last 90 days, over 100,000 different people have actually watched a video on this channel, which is insane to me. But then it occurred to me as well, that means like less than a quarter of the people who have watched my videos have subscribed to the channel. So if you are someone who has watched the content or you've just stumbled across my channel, it'd be mean a lot to me if you would consider subscribing. All right, no more promo. It's time to crack into this phantom draft. So the West Coast Eagles obviously hold pick one in this draft. And surprise, surprise, they're going to take Harley Reid at this selection. There's no chance that they're going to take someone else. As much as Sam McClure likes to suggest it, uh, they'll either trade the pick or they'll take Harley Reid at pick one. So he joins a uh, powerful, strong young midfield there at the West Coast Eagles, but you consider Jinby and Hewitt. Let's move on to pick two. This is probably going to be a bid for Gold Coast Jed Walter, the key position forward um, out of the Gold Coast Academy. And honestly, on talent, this kid's up there right there with Reid. He is a superstar. Really powerfully built, sort of key forward, ready to go. It's not going to take him long to impact the AFL level. Well, Gold Coast will match this, and that will be pick two, Jed Walter, which leaves North with picks three and four back-to-back. -back. And there is a little bit of conjecture here that Zane Dozma is going to bob up. I am going to double down on, I think, what I said in the last video. Actually, I can't remember who I picked in the last mock draft, but I'm going to double down here and go Colby McKercher pick three, the best available midfielder in this draft in terms of pure midfielder. He is an absolute star, as you want my thoughts on him. I did a video on it yesterday, but he's clearly best available. And I think they're going to go tall at this pick. And I think they'll take Daniel Curtin. I've uh, read that they are particularly impressed by the way he interviewed and stuff like that. Is he necessarily best available? No, I think North Melbourne would consider on talents, guys like Zane Dersma or even Nick Watson. But I think for list balance as well, they're going to go for a taller here in Curtin, who may end up a midfielder anyway, but we'll see what happens there. That leaves Hawthorne on the clock now with uh, pick five. And they've been kind of linked to both Nick Watson and Zane Dersma. I'm going to say Zane Dersma here is the best available talent and that's who they will select obviously they just recruited a small forward in Ginevan so you tend to go best available with these picks anyway and Zane Dersma is justifiably best available as a powerfully built sort of strong marking forward that leaves the Bulldogs who obviously traded up to collect this pick what was one I kind of expected although in the last one I think I, I thought Richmond might be a chance but the Bulldogs get this pick and this is where they'll take Nick Watson I also called it sort of considered maybe Riley Sanders as a genuine midfielder uh, sort of next in line in that production line but they're kind of on the market for a small forward and him and Waitman potentially uh, partnering up for the next decade is an interesting prospect that's for sure. Uh, then you got Melbourne on the clock. I think they'll bid on Ethan Reed from the Gold Coast Academy. Melbourne probably need a young ruck to begin with so I selected them but it's a little bit arbitrary who bids on him. But regardless he is close to a top 5 or 6 talent anyway. Ethan Reed 202 centimeter uh, ruckman kind of plays like a midfielder too so he's quite a interesting uh, tall prospect in that sense. So Gold Coast get Walter and then Ethan Reed. Now Melbourne back on the clock with their actual pick and uh, this one I, I considered Riley Sanders as well but I think I'm going to go for Nate Caddy now he is a slightly undersized key forward prospect about 192 centimeters pretty powerfully built he's quite ready made and can probably play round one but he's also shown a bit of uh, ability to play a bit more of a center square role as well so potentially becomes a big body midfielder not quite the answer to their key forward question but he is still a very good prospect and about best available which leaves GWS to select Riley Sanders from Tasmania I think the Giants didn't really address any of their midfield issues 
And when I say midfield issues, I mean really the fact that they lost Taranto and Hopper last year. They drafted Ralston, but other than that, I expected them to um, maybe top up with some young midfield talent, but this is where they'll do it. Riley Sanders doesn't have a go-home factor as such. Maybe in four years, we'll see what happens with Tazzy, but Lark Medalist, one of the best midfielders available. In fact, he's probably the second best pure midfielder in this draft, so GWS will be happy with that, which leaves Geelong on the clock, and I think there's a chance they do trade this pick, particularly live if they don't get Sanders. But I think they'll go Conor O'Sullivan if they do select it. Best available key defender in, uh, in well, in my opinion, the best available key defender and uh, a good, strong, intercepting player out of New South Wales. That leaves Essendon. This one really is tricky. Essendon obviously topped up their best 22 quite a lot this free agency period. I would have thought they were on the market for a key back and I think if O'Sullivan's there, they will take him. But I'm just going to go best available here. And I think they might take James Leak, who is a rebounding, uh, strong overhead d- a defender with lots of running carry for a start. He's one that's shot up the rankings in recent times. So I think Essendon take the plunge on James Leake. Adelaide at pick 12. Well, they've got some needs, uh, but I think at this first pick, they'll go best available. And for me, that's probably Darcy Wilson out of Victoria. A bit of a sort of lightly built utility who plays prominently forward, but on the wing. I think they'll probably see him as an outside midfielder, at least uh, maybe he'll start on the forward line, who knows, but I think they'll draft him for the midfield. And I think he's probably the best available pick for Adelaide. And then look at needs with their later picks. Melbourne's on the clock again, and they're going to bid again on a uh, Western Bulldogs father's son. Uh, Jordan Croft will probably go within this range. He's a 200 plus centimeter key forward, quite lightly built actually, but he has nominated the Bulldogs. Bulldogs will match this bid and get their second first rounder in Jordan Croft. Obviously the demons still need a key forward and that's why I picked them to bid on him. So we'll move along to their actual pick. Again, probably a case of best available. This is where the, the talent pool starts to get quite even, so it's a little bit subjective. But I'll go Caleb Windsor, uh, a Victorian wingman, one of probably the best pure wingmen in this draft. Really classy sort of player, good overhead, quite tall, actually, or at least he plays taller than he actually is. But they get a young outside midfield talent. Now, this is the pick that is probably going to sting Sydney fans because I, I for a start, I think Sydney can be a little bit weird with their draft selections. And, and when I say weird, I mean they generally do well, but... They need a key defender. We've had a few off the board already. I could have gone Ollie Murphy, but I'm going to go with a huge bolter here and say that Zane Zakastelski gets picked in the first round of this year's draft. He's had a really strong end of the year. I think he was best on ground in the Colts grand final for Claremont, and he tested really, really well, shows some great versatility. Has played in the He played in the ruck in that game. But Sydney, obviously, they need a key defender. I think they tend to have kind of an interesting view on the draft. They generally pick weird selections, I reckon. And they also draft heavily out of WA with guys like the Warner Brothers, Sheldrick, those ones come to mind. So I think they've got a strong scouting network in WA. I just think Zach Estelsky to Sydney is my gut feel. I'll change my mind a million times, but we'll roll with it for now. Then we've got St. Kilda, and I've got them bidding on Jake Rogers, a small-bodied midfielder out of the Gold Coast Academy, which will be subsequently matched. Uh, this guy looks like a great young talent, except he's only 172 centimeters. St. Kilda kind of have a need for a midfielder. That's why I kind of picked them around this range, but this will be around the range he goes. So Gold Coast, again, get the three first-round academy talents. Um, lucky them. Secure's back on the board. Now they uh, probably need some midfielders and they probably need some run and carry. But again, a lot of the guys that I would like for St. Kilda are just picked to other clubs like Wilson and Windsor, for instance. But given the fact that they just recruited Dow and Liam Henry, maybe they just go best available. I think Riley Hardiman falls around this range and I'll get him to St. Kilda at this pick. Probably settles as a defender at the next level, but has, can push up onto the wing provides some running carry as well. So it gives uh, St. Kilda's recruiting a little bit more of a balance in this offseason. Adelaide on the clock. Again, another team that needs a key defender. So I've got them bidding on South Australian father-son to Hawthorne. Hawthorne will subsequently match. He's a uh, 197 centimeter key defender who will... uh, absolutely be matched, I would have thought, around this range. So Hawthorne get Dersma and McCabe. That kind of justifies them going best available at the first pick because they know they're getting a key positional talent uh, later in the first round. So with that in mind, Adelaide have picked Darcy Wilson already in this draft. Who do they go next? I will say that they take the best available key defensive prospect in Ollie Murphy, who has started to slide a little bit down the rankings, but in my opinion, projects as a pretty good talent as a key position defender at the next level. So again, that's another one where Adelaide get a little bit of uh, balance to their recruiting offseason because I don't think they went hard enough for a key back, at least from the outside looking in. Then North Melbourne's an interesting one. They've got three of the next four picks as it currently stands. So that goes North Melbourne, then GWS, and then two subsequent North Melbourne picks. So we'll start off with North Melbourne's pick. 
They kind of just probably want to pick the guy that they think GWS might. I'm just going to go best available and pick Archie Roberts. Again, adding some balance to North Melbourne's recruiting. They've got McKercher. They've got Fisher. They've got Stevens. Uh, they got um, Daniel Curtin. That was the other one that was escaping me. And now they add a running defender, a really, really fast and skillful uh, halfback flanker out of Victoria there. So Archie Roberts is the best available prospect at this pick, in my opinion. Okay, we'll refresh the board there. Now on to the second 20 of this year's draft. So we've got GWS on the board with one pick sandwiched between a bevy of North Melbourne picks. I'm going to have them be a bit of a dick to Sydney in this scenario. If you remember last year, Sydney bid on Ralston quite early, certainly earlier than I expected. I think it was like 17. I think GWS is going to be a bit of a prick to Sydney here. They're going to bid on Caden Cleary, who was an All-Australian midfielder, I believe, in the under-18s. Uh, a small, lightly built uh, midfielder, 180 centimetres. Again, GWS need a midfielder. It helps that he's from Sydney. Kind of fits probably what they're after. I'm going to assume Sydney have the points to match because their, their picks are in the 40s. Um, there is a chance that I have this wrong and they can't match that if they don't have enough points or maybe they can live trade. Who knows? Sydney are pretty crafty like that. So I'll say Sydney match and they get Zach Ostelski and and Caden Clear here. This is where I think Sydney fans are going to come at me in the comments. Actually, now that I think about it, I feel like I don't hear too much from Sydney fans. Let me know in the comments if you're a Sydney fan. Okay, GWS are back on the board, and I have got them already taking Riley Sanders. They've kind of ticked the midfield box. I'll probably be happy with that. This is probably a case of best available, and there's probably the second of all three picks they're going to take in this year's draft. I'm going to give him Colton Tholstrup, probably best available. He's a player that sort of slid a little bit over the course of this year, powerfully built forward slash midfielder. Been playing the Waffle Seniors uh, a lot this year, a little bit like Hewitt did last year and uh, kind of faded away a little bit because he wasn't standing out. Didn't stand out at under 18 uh, level either, you know, in the championships. But either way, there's a lot of upside there and I think uh, I think the GWS Giants will snap him up here. Then we got North Melbourne again with two picks to round out their draft. So again, I've given them a pretty balanced mix so far. I'm going to go Lance Collard out of uh, Subi Akko out of Western Australia, one of my favorite players in the draft. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know, I really want him to get to West Coast. On talent, he probably goes higher than here. I've heard a suggestion that he might not be super comfortable with leaving WA, which might see him slide further than this. But I think I've heard that Alistair Clarkson is a fan. So let's say Lance Collard makes it to North Melbourne. And finally, to round out their draft, this will be the last selection they take, I reckon. And uh, they're going to go with a Ruckman here in Will Green, the uh, probably the highest or second highest rated Ruck um, when you consider Ethan Reid as well. Sometimes forget about the Academy boys. But they've just lost Goldstein. Uh, you know, probably don't have a real strong long-term ruck setup there. Will Green's considered about a top 25 talent, at least according to Toomey as well. I don't know a whole heap about him, but I think from a list needs point of view, this adds, again, nice balance to their recruiting mix. So they get five good players there. The Premiers then enter the draft at pick 25, and I've got them taking Harry Demetia. Couple of thoughts to this one. Um, first of all, Demetia is a pretty highly rated, sort of top 25 talent. Powerfully built sort of midfielder with a lot of pace. I have been watching his highlights lately and this guy has serious pace to burn for an inside mid. Sort of probably more of a pressure forward or even a halfback flanker at the next level. There's also the fact that I think he and Harley Reid are good mates so I wonder if Collingwood would just pick him and be like, try and get in Harley Reid's ear and get him to move from West Coast next year. Who knows? St Kilda back on the board and again I probably will still look midfield with this pick because I gave them more of a halfback flanker with the first selection but I think a guy who fits their profile nicely is Charlie Edwards. He's another player player in this draft that I think actually if he goes this late in my personal opinion which isn't worth a lot I think that would be really good value and really nice balanced midfielder 191 centimeters really good class on the outside too so I think he really ticks the box from a needs point of view and and the talent level is right for that pick as well we've got the Adelaide Crows now now who have I given them I've given them Darcy Wilson and I got them their key back they'll probably just go best available this selection they might pick up the local small forward in Jack Deline Shaw is a small forward really high on their priority list probably Probably not. They did just lose McAdam though, and I do think this guy has talent uh, to impact as a goal scorer at the next level. So historically as well, the Crows, you know, they, they seem to place a heavy emphasis on scoring power. You know, the, the hallmark of this team and the team that was good in, you know, 2017, they've had one of the best forward lines always. And I, on, by that logic, I think they'll draft another forward. Then we have Carlton and uh, they're probably, again, probably best available, but I want to give them a small forward. If they missed out on Jack Deline, I'll give them Phoenix 
Gothard, I think it's pronounced Gothard. He's a bit of a bolter. I don't know a lot about this kid, but he's really shot up the rankings, particularly according to Toomey. He is a 178 centimeters, so a pretty small forward. I wish I could give you more of a profile than that. I'm still learning about some of these kids, but he's probably going to go around this range, and I think Carlton makes sense from a list point of view. Uh, West Coast is now on the clock. Now, I've previously suggested that I would like a, a, ta a balanced draft this year and probably go tall with his pick, but around this pick, I think a lot of the ones I'm interested are probably gone. Like, I'd love Zach Estelsky at this range, but I don't think he's going to last that long. So I'm going to go best available and probably go the local town at Clay Hall. Is this a little bit of a reach? A little bit. I think he could probably get him 10 picks later. But I do think West Coast sometimes have their finger on the pulse with some of these underrated West Australian talents running around in WA. So it's worked well for us in the past. Let's just say Clay Hall to the West Coast Eagles. Geelong enter the draft. Uh, oh, sorry, they don't enter the draft. That's a lie. They've got Conor O'Sullivan, and I do think they will probably still be looking at young midfielders to complete this or continue this transition of their midfield. And that's probably the best available one is George Stevens, who, get this right, 189 centimeters, and unless this is a typo, he is 100 kilos. That is enormous. But powerfully built inside midfielder. They've drafted a few mids in recent times, but at this range, he's the best available midfielder in my opinion. So George Stevens joins the Geelong Cats. Carlton is back on the clock, and I've got him taking two GF, a player that I've sort of researched in recent times. I think I did a video about players that were starting to bolt recently. Two GF is one of those. I don't think he's going to last a big 40 where Hawthorne could match him as an academy pick. I think he's too good for that. And and they'll get their running defender into GF. Richmond's entering the draft now for the first time and another team with a clear need to cycle through some young midfielders. So I've got them taking Joel Frazier, 191 centimeter, a midfielder with a bit of class, happy with that. Then the Brisbane Lions are on the clock and I will say that they bid on Gold Coast. Yes, fourth. Fourth Academy player in this year's draft in Will Graham. I don't know a whole lot about him. Sorry, Gold Coast fans, I just... First of all, I hadn't heard of him until about a week ago, but I do know that he tested pretty well at the Combine, and that tends to pl uh, lift players up. I'm sure the Gold Coast are all over him, and I'll, I'll assume that they match with this pick and cap off a very, very good draft for the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, Brisbane, back on the clock now. I'm going to give him Ari Schoenmaker. This guy is like 194 centimeter, key defender. Um, he kind of plays more as an attacking option uh, out of defense, if that makes sense. He's got one of the longest kicks in the draft, that's for sure. Um, do Brisbane specifically need him? Probably not. Might be probably best available in my opinion. Then Essendon's back on the clock. I gave them leak in their first round selection. Uh, this one, I will say that they pair up the Reed brothers and take a key forward in Archer Reed. This draft is pretty bereft of key forwards. Archer Reed, uh, unless I've forgotten someone in terms of true key forwards, he is the next one after Jed Walter. I probably wasn't considering caddy a true key forward but there you go a 203 centimeter really athletic sort of like really skinny key forward um, long-term prospect there this is probably about his range Essendon makes sense in terms of need and the romantic notion of pairing up the brothers Collingwood is back on the clock. We are up to pick 36 now. I've got them taking Luamon Lual. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. A pretty highly rated small defender out of uh, Victoria, I believe. And again, probably on talent actually goes a little bit higher. Probably just small defenders. They're not really, there isn't really a premium on them in draft. So I actually think this is a bargain for Collingwood. And I think that he will go there and succeed. Uh, then we got Fremantle entering the draft for the first time. What are their needs? Well, uh, recently, there is a need for a small forward, and therefore, I've got them taking local boy Cohen Sanchez. I actually used to work with um, Cohen's older brother. Fun fact, that didn't add anything to the video, but uh, you know, he's had a pretty good year as a, a genuine small forward. He's 177 centimeters, so that's pretty small. And again, Fremantle's entering the draft light. I think they might just stick local. There's a few options there. So Cohen Sanchez to them. Uh, Essendon back on the clock. They've just taken Leak. They've just taken Archer Reed. I'm going to go with a midfielder this time and go with Will Brown. Brown, who is a very, very tall and powerfully built midfielder out of Victoria. I think he was best on ground in the Coast Talent League Grand Final. Forgive me if I got that wrong, but I think he had 18 touches and three goals. Very smooth moving sort of guy. Well, actually, sometimes he looks a little bit awkward, but at the same time, he never really runs himself into trouble. He's one of those players. So we've got two picks remaining in the top 40. I've got the West Coast Eagles back on the clock here and uh, probably go best available. They're going to take a running defender in Angus Hasty. Now, this is probably the sort of pick where we would just pick a left field West 
Australian talent that no one's heard of. But I think there is always an appetite for a uh, running defender with some good rebound. I do quite like the look of Hasty. This is he's kind of plummeted a little bit. I think he was rated top 30 at one point, and uh, at the moment he's starting to fall down the rankings for whatever reason. But run and carry speed out of the back half is something that a everyone every club needs. But West Coast is also trying to transition to a new game style, so that's my logic there. Angus Hasty makes sense. It could be a random WA kid, but I'm going to go with Hasty. And finally, rounding out pick 40, I've got the Brisbane Lions taking Logan Morris, a undersized key forward prospect out of Victoria. 191 centimeters. Don't know a whole lot about him, but he is one player that is starting to move up the rankings in recent times as well. And I've seen a, a gentle link to Brisbane online. So we'll go with that. So Brisbane, again, not really entering the draft until the 30s. Obviously, uh, that's because of the Dunkley trade last year. And they just top up a little bit with some key positional talent. Ari Show will make it down back and Logan Morris up forward. But anyway, guys, that is my Phantom Draft. At the moment, things can change and things will continue to change. So I don't think this will be my last one before the draft. I think, uh, you know, if there's pick swaps, I'll probably just whip out a new Phantom Draft depending on how dramatic the, the changes are. This one is probably going to be every couple of weeks and then right up to the draft, I'll probably be making uh, making Phantom Drafts as long as you enjoy them. I hope you're enjoying them. But as always, guys, I really appreciate all the support on the channel lately. You guys have been great and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.